Hey everybody, how's it going? After my most recent contractor experience, I can honestly say that I have a great level of sympathy for people who pay a professional based on a referral who doesn't get the job that they pay for, which is precisely why I have a great amount of sympathy for members of the Consumer Technology Association. You pay to be a part of an organization that would lobby on behalf of your interests. And if the testimony that we heard from Charlie Brown is any indication it doesn't seem like you got what you paid for. Now, with the contractor that I hired, it doesn't seem like I'm able to get money back because the same day that he failed in his filing for bankruptcy, it seems to be the same day that his home mysteriously went on fire. And from what I hear from people who have attempted to go the legal route in the past, they were not able to collect any money. However, lobbyists tend to have quite a bit of money. So I think that if the people who are members of the Consumer Technology Association filed a chargeback, they'd actually be able to get their money back. The thing is, when you call up Visa or MasterCard and you say, hey, I'd like my money back because I didn't get the service I asked for, they're going to ask for evidence, and it can be a time-consuming process to create that evidence. So I thought, hey, let me do you a favor, since I feel bad for how you were treated, and give you some of that evidence for you. Let's take a look at the testimony that he provided. Let's take a look at how he presented himself. Let's take a look at alternative ways that your interests could have been presented to the senators that were asking him questions that he was completely unable to present himself or answer. And uh, go. let's go from there. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. I am Charlie Brown. I'm here today on behalf of the Consumer Technology Association. Uh, we are opposed to Senate Bill 5799. I, uh, 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 we believe that uh, Senate Bill 5799 is uh, 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 in uh, 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 lithium ion batteries and the potential uh, 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 dangerous, 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 uh, 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 robust uh, uh, consumer uh, companies. Uh, 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 we absolutely oppose this bill. Um, we do look forward to having more robust conversations about this. Uh, uh, we would like to have more robust conversations. I believe that we get to have that opportunity uh, as with some of the conversations that a number of us have had uh, earlier this week. Uh, uh, Do I own this phone? I mean, it sounds like when I buy it, I, my intention, my understanding was I buy, I pay you money, it's now mine. But it sounds like there's some lasting commitment where am, am I renting it from the company? Like why, why do I have some obligation back to you? If I go buy a pencil at Office Depot, they don't like come tell me how I can use my pencil or where I can take my pencil. I get to do whatever I want with it. Why is it different? Especially because my iPhone costs a little bit more than a pencil at Office Depot does. It, how is this relationship different than when I buy other products in the marketplace? Senator, clearly there are a lot of issues that we need to walk through. Um, what I will say is that that supercomputer that's in your pocket, which you say is an iPhone, um, uh, repair that phone and do it under warranty so that you can still feel confident that what you're getting back is a phone that does not have TikTok put onto it. Uh, 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 there are some, this, this I, I, we should be educating our future uh, students to create the cobblers of the future consumer electronics show down in Las Vegas this year. And what's coming your way is really quite uh, uh, amazing. Uh, we're a leader in this state. For this conversation, we need to have a serious discussion about how we go forward on this, and I know we're going to have that opportunity. So, no, but really, let's see how he answers this question when the senator asks it. Senator, clearly there are a lot of issues that we need to walk through. Um, what I will say is that that supercomputer that's in your pocket, which you say is an iPhone, um, there's a warranty that goes along with that, and there's an authorized network of people that are that we have vetted who know how to uh, repair that phone and do it under warranty so that you can still feel confident that what you're getting back is a phone that does not have TikTok put onto it, doesn't raise some of the data privacy questions that I think this very committee is uh, wrestling with right now, and things that I think that when you get that back, you should feel assured that you're not going to uh, have some kind of a compromise uh, in that particular device that's in your pocket. Uh, so there are some, this, this I, I absolutely actually agree with Senator Rolfes and that we should be educating our future uh, students to create the cobblers of the future, which is digital technology. I happen to have an opportunity to be at the Consumer Electronics Show down in Las Vegas this year, and what's coming your way is really quite uh, uh, 
amazing. And I think that we should all uh, be spending more time and educating more of our students in computer technology. I think it ought to be done in the middle school so we can capture all the students early on. I think that we ought to be pushing that in this state. We're a leader in this state. For this conversation, we need to have a serious discussion about how we go forward on this. And I know we're going to have that opportunity. So, now let's see how that could have been handled if you had hired a properly educated lobbyist who took even 20 seconds to look into the issue. Senator, absolutely. When you purchase that phone, you own it. You don't have any obligations to us. Whether you're within warranty or out of warranty, you can either take your phone to us, the authorized repair center, you can take it to a third-party repair center, or you can fix it yourself. If you have an issue with your screen, you can go to mobilecentrics.com and buy either a screen for your phone, a battery for your phone, a power button cable for your phone, and you can even buy the screwdrivers to fix it yourself. Now, I understand that in some cases there can be frustration because in certain areas we do use proprietary screws. However, the reason we use them is because in in certain areas is really small screws and in our experience we found that when we use Phillips which is much, just that little cross they strip much easier which is why we use those penelope ones which have more pieces to grab the screw so it's less likely to strip. However, you can go to a website like Casey Toolco and companies like Weha will sell you a screwdriver for five to seven dollars or if you want to go with the cheapo one that's not as good sometimes they even come for free when you buy a repair kit on eBay. Now do we have the best systems in place when it comes to more advanced repairs and helping the customer, like logic board repairs or data recovery? No, and we are working on that. Those are admittedly difficult issues for any company because logic board repairs are not basic. It is hard to get a supply system put together due to how complex it is. And I'm more than happy to speak with you later so that we can try and develop a better system to serve our customers and to ensure that you feel that we're serving our customers and your constituents properly. I'm more than happy to meet. But at the moment, you do have those different manners of working on your phone. We're not going to stop you from purchasing from any of those companies to work on your phone. If you want to go to a site like Mobile Centrics, it's not like you're wiring money to some rando in China. This is something you could do with a credit card and feel secure in your purchase. So yes, you indeed own your phone when you purchase it, Senator, and we're not trying to take that right away from you. This is what he could have said if he was using his brain. Now, obviously, it's a somewhat disingenuous answer because, yes, those screws are more difficult to strip, but you could have also used Torx for it. Yes, there are certain parts that are made more difficult. Yes, they do things like program specific features to, they say they've been serializing specific features to that specific screen. So even if you buy a good aftermarket, certain things will never going to work again. And there are a lot of parts where you're not able to buy aftermarket at all because they don't exist. They do a lot to make it purposely difficult to repair the board of the phone, like purposely, not, you know, no schematic, no board views, uh, having those types of exclusive agreements when it comes to certain chips like power management ICs, which makes it really difficult to find them. You got to get them off donor boards and all this other crap. But it would have been a good surface level answer. And even though it's obviously somewhat disingenuous and missing the total scope of our complaints, he would have addressed a teeny tiny element. Yeah, like mobile centric doesn't sell everything else. So they, if I want a laptop screen, can I buy it? No. If I want many other parts to Apple products, can I buy it? No. Are there many other devices out there that they don't cover, of course. But it would have covered, it would have at least made it seem like I'm responding to the basic complaint that is being proposed, and I would have directly answered the senator's question rather than, uh, um, supercomputer in your pocket, uh, um, children, uh, um, education, uh, um, uh, they're gonna put TikTok on your phone, oh no, like, the answer that he gave, not only was it a bullshit answer, but he, he kind of came like he, he sounded like he was lying, like he had this look on his face. If you're an experienced lobbyist and you look like you're in your 50s and you have a lobbying firm, don't you have any experience so that when you're speaking in front of a legislative body, you don't look like uh, a drug addict that uh, um, is afraid that he's uh, not going to get his fix or like some gambler that's just bet his, that just bet his house and his kid's college fund on a, on a blackjack game? Like it's, it just, it it fun it bothers me when people are that bad at their job, and that was what I got from watching this testimony. But I'm kind of curious what you all think. So um, I will be uploading the rest of the series, the rest of the videos from this legislative hearing as well as the main legislative hearing, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you very much, and have a good day. And as always, I hope you learned something.